so right word. Right thoughts, right words, right action. I, I think uh, when, when you name a record, you have to uh, you have to choose something which you feel reflects the record or that collection of songs. You, you also want to choose something that uh, reflects not just the mood of the record, but the mood of the the people who made it when yeah, the mood of those people when they recorded it. And um, there were quite a few things that sort of came up as ideas. Uh, but right thoughts, right words, right action seem to be, um, yeah, seem to sum it up best. It, it's, if, it, it's probably the most positive record I think we've made, and the band have been, um, yeah, the most optimistic we've been since before we had any encounter with the music industry. Yeah, probably because we've been uh, sort of. Um, keeping a low profile for a while and not talking about ourselves too much. I guess at first, Alex and Nick wrote and demoed most of the material at Nick's studio which he's called Sausage Studios, and Alex's house in the borders. What's the name of your studio? It's called... You sounded really good down there. Uh, all right, oh, well, yeah. well, let's you put it down and we'll, 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 we'll try that as well. Yeah, 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 okay. Yeah, let's see. Blitz the winter time in, Monday, Sunday, oh, should be... I've got my melody down. <laughs> I think we did like maybe five six mm. sessions of recording yeah this record is kind of different like we didn't sort of like write all the songs or try and do all the recording at one point there were definite batches so we would concentrate on like so sort of like three or four uh, songs at a time and often you'd find like maybe one song from a session would what was that you created it <laughs> <laughs> okay. we did we did we did we did a couple of other bits with different people as well you know, like there were a couple of uh, collaborations in terms of production and being in the studio together, like uh... Joe and Alexis from Hot Chip. But yeah, we, we worked with them in, in a way that was new to me, you know, we were used to producing our own records, but we were helping them to produce things that they had very clear ideas about, but they were also open to like little bits of playing on the tracks, melodic ideas here and there. Joe and Alexis was fun. Really fun to work with. Good musicians, I think. Good guys. Yeah. We did uh, Right Thoughts. Right Words, Right Action. But now it's just called Right Action, but the name of the album is Right Thoughts, Right Words, Right Action. But the, the words Right Thoughts, Right Words, Right Action are in the song Right Action, and that's where we got the idea for calling the album Right Thoughts, Right Words, Right Action. We also did Yeah, Goodbye Lovers and Friends. And those are the two that made the album. But we also did some collaborations with other people as well. Mm. Bjorn, Yitling who's in a band called Peter, Bjorn and John. And he was very nice and he's very like us and I guess our bands were contemporaries and we played with them back, you know, years ago. Yeah, it's just good time. He said, what kind of sound would you like for your new record? And I was saying, well, you know, we all like lots and lots of different things. We like to listen to different things and, you know, we take influences from everywhere. Really, we want to sound like... Uh, Franz Ferdinand doing something new. It was really nice to go over and hang out with him. Yeah, two songs that we did with Bjorn were on, ended up on our album. One is called Trees and Animals, and the other is called The Universe Expanded. Universe Expanded, right, okay, The Universe Expanded. <whistles> that was a wibbly wobbly road, that song. Alex and I kind of started it. Over to my place, so sort of meet up and sort of talk about some ideas for songs. It's, it's a fairly commonly known theory. The idea that the universe will get to a certain point. Then it will start coming back again. I don't know who made this theory up. I know it wasn't Bob. Put my hands up here, I'm not a scientist. 
but everything that happened will happen again backwards, so time will you know, run backwards. Looking forward to that point because then they get to to meet again. And so we were just riffing with each other, sort of like throwing, throwing each other ideas. Let's get the RSPCA a mention in a song. That's something I'm quite chuffed about, getting the RSPCA into a song. I'm trying to make it kind of heartbreaking and a little bit funny at the same time. Like you can be breaking up with somebody and and still smile at each other and understand that you appreciate each other's sense of humour, even though you're breaking each other's hearts. That's what you, that's your one hope uh, for happiness is just waiting for a person to come back again. Musically, I wanted to create something that reflected the subject, subject of the song, and so I wanted something that was a little bit um, more isolated and melancholic, yet very much close to the heart itself. Very close mic'd, very highly amplified sounds from around, around about the body, so like the, the kick drum is a microphone literally placed here and we just kind of go like a stethoscope you just hear this sort of third of the chest cavity with the, the bass echoes literally going around about the heart so the kick drum that you hear in the song is that and then the you hear this kind of that sort of sound as well and the hi-hats are like a little sort of like scratch of the strut of the stubble very close intimate body parts maybe not too intimate, but you know what I mean. <laughs> well, the we did another collaboration as well, didn't we? Yeah, I mean, there was uh, that guy from Norway. Oh, yeah, it's Terry Olsen or Todd Terrier uh, from Norway. My favourite thing that came out of that collaboration was the end of Stand on the Horizon. Uh, it sounds like nothing that Terry's done before, and it sounds like nothing that we've done before. And it's this beautiful, uplifting piece of music uh, about. <laughs> but throwing yourself to the North Sea and wanting the North Sea to take you. North Sea to me, baby. North Sea The hot chip sessions we did, I guess. What we did get from that was uh, Mark Ralph, their engineer, we kinda of pinched him. Mark Ralph is a very nice man, he's a very nice man, is he? And he came up to Alex's studio in Scotland. He's a great um, engineer as well. Yeah, he? Just, uh, he's a good guy to hang out with. And he's got a good good taste. Uh, yeah, so what we're talking about, yeah, so we went up to Scotland. Most of it was recorded like the band in a room, all together. If you play live as a band, you, you know, one guy will slow down and speed up a little, the next guy will kind of compensate, and you get this kind of pull and push, which, uh, generally tends to make for a uh, much better recording. It's just more exciting. It sounds, like, uh, it sounds like somebody talking to you rather than somebody reciting lines. Um, what are the songs we do? Evil Eye. Uh, we've always liked a bit of um, uh, R&B beat. That song came about when I was up in Scotland, like came up with this stupid riff. The, the ding, 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 down. I came down to London uh, to um, do some stuff at Sausage Studio with uh, Nick McCarthy. We'd arranged to meet up at a certain time, like 11 o'clock in the morning or something like that. I would sit in the cafe with a, with a notebook and just sort of scribble down ideas. I've always been kind of obsessed with the evil eye and the, the idea of being able to put a curse on people. And Don't put the evil eye on me. But you also have the all-seeing eye, this, the, 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 the ability to predict the future. I was sitting in the cafe and I was going, uh, well, okay, I'm going to test it, I'm going to, I'm going to close my eyes. And the next car that goes past the window is going to be red. I opened my eyes and it was red. It's fucking red, you bastard. It's red, you bastard. It was red, you bastard. I told you. And I was just writing it all down. Uh, I think very funny lyrics. People see you as a freak because you've got the evil eye. Really great fun to play live as well. People want to be able to see what you can see. Some people can see that you can see. Some people see you as a freak. And some people try and put the evil eye on you because you've got the all-seeing eye. Maybe the all-seeing eye is the evil eye. It's just a little bit terrifying when you start looking into the eye. Ah! So I wrote a song about it. We recorded like a lot of stuff at Mark's studio as well. And it's called Club Ralph in Kensal Rise in West London. Club Ralph is good, it's like a um, very small studio that Mark has put together over however many years. Nick, it, it's, it, it's uh, F, C and D minor, isn't it? Yeah, that's one, yeah, 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 yeah. 
Can you play the bass? Yeah, what can I do? The track with five or? Yeah, try it with five too. Yeah. Problem is there aren't enough chairs, so you kind of you have to guard your chair quite quite a lot. And then if someone else comes in the studio, um, they have to stand up. Um, other songs on Love Illumination. Alex had a, a, a riff that I thought was far too uh, rocky. You know, the riffs have been kicking about and had existed in other songs. There was a song called The Red Brick Road. Uh, which I wrote in one of my bleak episodes up in Black Pudding, uh, which was about uh, taking the principle from The Wizard of Oz, which was that you followed the yellow brick road because there was no place like home. And I was figuring, what if there's, if any place would be better than home, what would you do then? Would you take the red brick road instead? And so that was the, the basis of that song. We played that song for a while, and uh, I guess I came to the conclusion that I didn't want to be such a miserable bastard, and um, we ditched the song. It took ages to work out how we could play it, how it made us feel the right to play it. I feel like I'm in Judas Priest when I when I play the uh, the, the guitar solo. We have dueling guitars on it. Yeah, I love it. It's it's uh, like when we first worked it out. I went around to Nick's flat one day, I was playing in the riff, and we thought it's kinda cool, but we could have a we answer sort of thing. To make it funky. And that's the riff of the song. We kinda wrote and recorded it in a weekend really. We finished arranging it in the practice room on a Saturday, and then we recorded it on a Sunday. That's when we get the best results, really, is we just knock it out, really, unselfconsciously. It reminded me of Billy Idol. I was even considering uh, getting a, a blonde um, quiff. The hairdresser advised me against it. It's uh, the heaviest we've got, but also we've got an oboe solo in it. <laughs> what's, uh, what's Love Illumination about? We all feel a sense of dissatisfaction at times. We can look outside us and see nothing but destruction, avarice and boredom. So we look to find that love where we can, well, where we can find it. Um, some people look to Hollywood, some people look to Blackpool and the bright lights of Blackpool. That's probably where I would look. Oh, there's another collaboration. <laughs> Roxanne Clifford of uh, Veronica Falls. So Roxanne sang uh, the beautiful high section of Fresh Strawberries. Uh, the main vocal mel melody goes... Etc, etc. And we wanted to have this high section. And uh, Nick has a beautiful falsetto and my falsetto. It sounds very similar to Nick's falsetto. It sounds something like this. Absolutely terrible. And uh, Nick and I tried to out falsetto each other, and it sounded fucking awful. And we had to admit that. You have to admit every now and again when you just can't do something and you need a beautiful voice. So we asked for Roxanne. Uh, in that session with Roxanne, like every session that made up this record, felt very spontaneous. Um, it was the people that I liked hanging out with. It was a good laugh. I just really enjoyed it. Come to Scotland. Come to Scotland. We, we, <laughs> on behalf of the Scotland Tourist Board, uh, we would say, come to Scotland, the home of good wine and good music. <laughs>